In this video, we're going to be talking about the NC editor from inside the Bobcad posting tab. Now, to get to the NC editor, you can go up to the cam tab and just launch the NC editor. If you ever need to launch a blank NC editor because you'd like to open up some G code inside of it, all you have to do is click NC editor here and it's going to launch up the NC editor. Right here it is initializing, so you just give it another minute and eventually it'll pop up. When the NC editor finally launches. When you launch it without any other code in it, this is where you can now go to file open and you'd be able to open up some NC code to then bring it into your NC editor. So though you didn't create it in Bobcad, you can still bring it in. You just may not be able to back plot it if that's what your goal is. The other way to do this is I'm going to close the NC editor and then I'm going to go ahead and post my code. So I'm going to right click on milling job here and say post and it's going to post process all the way through. And then the code's going to pop up over here on my posting tab. Your posting tab might be up against the wall right here like this Bobcad Live is, but I have my code right here. So I'm going to right click in the code and then say NC Editor. So I'm just going to open the NC Editor. The page is going to launch it right there. And then eventually our code's going to pop up and there it is right there. So when it opens up with the code, we have a bunch of options here. We'll first see that the code's all colorful. Every line number is going to be orange. Every T is going to have gray to it. Every M code is going to be yellow. Every G code is going to be yellow. And then some comments are going to be green. And you could change all this information. Now up here we have a find option. So find is going to let us find a word or replace words. We can actually say replace. And then you could do a find and replace of a section of words. So if I take this, I could say, let's find the word feature. And then just say find next and we'll see it right. There's the word feature. And then I could come in and say replace it. Or I could type in a G code. I could say G54. I want to change that to G55. So if I said, let's find all of our G54s and replace them all with G55 because I forgot to change the setting when I was in Bobcad, I could just say replace all. And all my G54s are now G55. Now, the next one is an option called Go To Lines. So when you click the Go To Line, you get your line number. And you could say, I want to go to line number 2345 and just hit OK. And it's going to go to that line 2345 right there. Now, if you need to, if your line sequencing came undone and you deleted some geometry out of here, or you deleted some code that you didn't need, you can go back and resequence your line numbers and it's just gonna regenerate all your line numbers from the beginning. Just be aware that sometimes it adds it into some lines you might not want. So I gotta come in and delete that one out of there. Or I might have an issue sending this code to my machine. Now remove blank lines is gonna remove any blank line depending on what your machine wants to see. And then you also have remove spaces. This is going to remove all the spaces in the code depending again on how your machine wants to see that. So I'll go ahead and hit undo and hit undo. And that brings us back into our code right here. Over here, we have a feed rate option. So right here's our feed for the plunge and our feed for the cut. So if I say feed rate, I can actually go in and I could change my feed rate by a certain percentage. So I can actually bring this up or down and then say units, I'll say imperial. And then I could say, I want to do it to the whole file. So everything in there gets selected. Or I could say up until the next tool change. Or I could go in and just pick specific lines and say those selected lines. But I'm going to say the whole file. And if we watch these numbers, they're both going to jump up a lot. We'll hit OK there. And you'll see they're now 119 and 59. If I was to hit OK again, it would do it all over again. Now we also have the option for changing the spindle speed. So right here, we'll see the S3945. So if I came in and said spindle speed, and I said, let's do the whole file, and I want to raise that up to 200%, I could say imperial, and then hit OK, and now we're at 7890, which is double the amount we had before. And then finally, the last one is edit values. This lets you go in and say, I want to change the D to a value of 5, and then I could say just for the selected line. So I'm going to go in and pick this right here and then say OK, and it's going to add 5 to that value. So I'm going to say D plus 5 to the selected line, so I have an H1, now I have a D6. 
Or I could just come in and manually change that to whatever I want. 45, I could say 5, I could say 10, whatever it has to be to match the tool or my machine, depending on what I want. And then up at the top, we have the View tab. Now, the View tab lets us collapse or expand our code, so we'll collapse it to different features here. We actually have a little minus tab next to all of our tool changes. Right here lets us re-expand that. You could say, find me my next tool change, and it'll actually cycle through through the MO6s and T1s and T2s. And then you could say, find my next comment, find my previous comment, or you can compare. Now, when you say compare, it's going to ask you to open up another piece of G code, and then you can compare that to the code you have in here. Now, all of this is part of the standard package. When we get into the simulate, this is where we start getting into the back plotting and all that stuff. This is what you're going to have that NC Editor Pro for. So if I want to back plot this, what I'm going to do first is say I want to verify my part. And I like to turn off these axes here and then show my coordinate system. And the reason I do that is it lets me see really nicely where this part's sitting out in space. And I could line it up with a good view right there. Now, if I don't want to see all the tool path covering the part, I could turn off the back plot option. But I could do that here in a minute. Right here's our controller and our resolution and then our main program. So we could say refresh. It's going to pull up the main program. We have our views right here. So you got top, bottom, front, back, left, right, isometric, and fit. That's going to fit everything to the screen. Now, if I don't want that coordinate system showing, I could turn it off. If I wanted axes showing, I could turn those on. If I don't want to see the tool or the holder, I could turn those off. And I could also go into the job setup. And the job setup is going to load everything in here. So we have our machine. We have our tool manager so we could see what tools are in here. And we have our full setup. So I'm going to go ahead and close this out. And then to get this to run, all I have to do is hit reset. And then we'll see when we hit play, the tool is going to come in and it's going to start cutting the part. Now, again, we're going to see all this tool path on the screen. If I don't want to see that, I just click this back plot button right here. It's going to hide all that tool path. And then right here is my simulation speed that I'm running at. So I'm just going to speed it up so we can see the results of this thing getting cut. But this is different than the standard simulation that's inside of the Bobcad because this one's actually running through the code to generate all these steps. So you may need to change your controller. And in my case, the G55 was going to screw this up. So I had to switch back to a G54 inside my code because I didn't have a reference for G55 for the simulation to happen. So it's just going to go around, cut the whole thing, and leave us with our final finished part. Now the last bit of this, so I say stop on this. And I'm going to go right here to the Tools tab. Now on the Tools tab, this is where we're going to find things like the toolpath statistics. So this lets us see the minimum, the maximum of X, Y, Z, and the length and the total cycle time. You get the total time. You get your minimums, your maximums, just all the statistics about this toolpath. We can see all the information that's been entered in for it, and we can actually export this out. You'll get a better sheet if you want to use the Generate Setup Sheets option. With a setup sheet, it's going to give you a little bit more. And then finally, we have the Start DNC Transfer. Now, the Start DNC Transfer option allows us to communicate with our machine via an RS-232 cable. So all I have to do is say Start DNC Transfer. And in here, I'd have to set up my port, my baud rate, my parity, my data bits, stop bits. And then we have the Discard Null option. And then we have our flow control, X on, X off, or hardware. And then up here, we have our communication protocol. So this is how we end up with a delay. This is how we drip feed our code. You end up with a character or a line delay, and you send it out in a slower format. Now, when you have everything all set up here, you'd be able to hit send, or you'd be able to say receive and receive back from your machine. The big thing here is that you need to make sure all of these values here are set up specifically for your machine. You'll also have to set them up inside the device manager. So to take a look at that, I'm going to go ahead and open up my device manager. Now when the device manager loads up, what you'll have in here is a ports section. Now inside your ports section, you'll have a communications port. And you can right click on here and go down to the properties. Now what you need to make sure you do is you need to set up the port setting. So the baud rate, the data bits, parity, stop bits, and flow control. All of this information here has to match this information here, which all has to match the information you get from either your machine or your machine dealer. After everything's set up and talking properly, you should be able to just come in here and hit send pretty much anytime you want to send code to the machine. 
Some machines have to have a handshake going on, meaning the machine's waiting for the code. You have to get it ready. You have to make it listen to the code. Other machines, you just start sending the code. It'll accept it and then bring it in and start running it. And then when you're all done, you just close this out. And then I can get rid of my device manager as well. And that's the NC editor. If you ever make a modification to your code, make sure to save it. And you can do that just by going up here and either hitting this save option here or going to a file and saying save. And then you'll get your save as option right here. You'll also get the ability to save the stock that you had inside of this simulation that's in here. And you can save it as an STL file and you can use it again later on if you needed to. Other than that, inside the options, the only things you're going to come up with are the display, just font sizes and resolutions, what default controller we're using, what default machine we're using, the job setup locations, external applications, which we don't have anything set in there, your mouse control, you can tell it exactly what you want your mouse to do, and then right here you have your about page. Now when we're all done, we can hit OK. And that concludes the video on the NC Editor from inside the Bobcad Cam Tree.